This is a follow-up to two of my previous videos, one in which I talk about the incredible fine-tuning of the universe, and another in which I talked about the anthropic principle. Basically, here's what I said. I talked about how the physical constants of the universe exhibit incredible evidence of finely tuned design. What do I mean? I mean factors such as the strength of gravity, the strength of interactions between protons and electrons and so forth, have to be fine-tuned to an incredible degree for life to even exist. This information did not come from Christian media or from any religious schools of thought. Rather, it came from physics. It came from secular sources. In fact, it was popularized by Barrow and Tipler, two authors who were by no means sympathetic to theism. They were not trying to promote a theistic worldview. In fact, they tried to explain it away. And yet they pointed out that the universe exhibits signs of incredible fine-tuning for life to exist. I mentioned the anthropic principle. This is a principle that Bauer and Tipler uh, formulated, where they basically said that you should not be surprised that life exists because, or, or that the universe exhibits such incredible signs of fine-tuning, because if it did not, then you would not be around to marvel at the fact that life exists. Now that's a completely unsatisfying answer for reasons I discussed in the video. It really doesn't explain anything. It's like saying, hey, you know, if you survive being shot at by you know, a dozen highly trained marksmen, you should not be surprised because if you were dead, you would not be alive to marvel at your incredible good fortune. Again, I refer you to the previous videos for a more detailed explanation of why that, that is completely unsatisfying and why it's no explanation at all. Now, several people responded by saying, well, we can explain this away. I mean, maybe there are billions and billions of universes out there. You know, and if there are billions and billions of universes out there, then life must surely be inevitable, and you don't need to talk about design. You don't need to talk about some cosmic designer and creator. You know, this is a common line of argument. People often have to couple the anthropic principle with this multiple universe theory in order to make it work. Uh, it's still not a satisfying answer though, and I touched on this briefly in one of my videos, where I pointed out, first of all, that there is no evidence for these multiple universes. I'd like to expand on that. I'd like to expand on the problems behind this explanation right now. First, like I said, there is absolutely zero evidence that multiple universes exist. Is it possible? Maybe, you know, there's some Certain quantum mechanical uh, equations allow for that possibility, but there's just no evidence for it. Speculation is not evidence. If we go where the evidence points, it will not lead us to multiple universes. And so that's really not uh, arguing based on what we know, it's ba arguing based on what we hope to arrive at. In other words, it, it's, it's aiming for a conclusion instead of going where the evidence points us to. There are other problems. For example, it's not enough merely to have multiple universes. It's not even enough, enough to have billions or trillions or quadrillions of universes. Why? Because these universes need to have their physical parameters distributed or spread out in some, how do I put it, some equitable fashion. What do I mean? Well, imagine that you have billions of universes, but the strength of gravity in all those universes is the same, or basically the same. In other words, clustered very close to, their the values are clustered close to each other. Does that really help you? No, because then you don't have this broad spectrum of gravitational values, and so you're, you're not really allowing for uh, an even, evenly distributed deck of cards, so to speak. In other words, having multiple universes doesn't help unless these constants, gravity, electromagnetic interactions, uh, decay rates of protons, etc., are spread out in some fashion such that at least one of them will have all the right combinations to produce life. What does this imply? This implies that whatever mechanism is responsible for creating these multiple universes must itself be designed such that these parameters are somehow distributed in an equitable fashion. In other words, in order to have multiple universes with these parameters spread out in the hopes that one of them will trigger life, you need to have some mechanism that is itself finely tuned in order for these universes to be equitably distributed. So that really doesn't get around the whole intelligent design argument at all. There are other reasons why this mechanism, whatever 
mechanism, this multiple universe spanning mechanism it is, would require fine tuning. It would also require an energy source. It would require means of making use of that, ener uh, that energy in a constructed manner, in a manner that constructs universes. We need an energy source because matter cannot be created from nothing, except, of course, through supernatural means. If we go by the physical laws of the universe, the matter and energy have to come from something, uh, and so forth and so on. Furthermore, it's not enough merely to trigger the right combinations of physical constants. Even the laws of the universe itself need to be properly selected to allow for life to exist. Again, what do I mean? Consider an atom, for example. For an atom to exist, you need to have attraction between the electrons and the nucleus. In other words, you need to have some manner of electromagnetic attraction there. Without the law of electromagnetic attraction, you cannot have atoms existing. Without atoms, there's no reason to believe that life would exist. Same thing with gravity. Without some gravitational interactions, you cannot have planets forming. And so there's no reason to believe that life would exist. Now, maybe you could speculate that life would exist through some other means, but that's pure empty speculation. And you know, there's just nobody's been able to offer a plausible scenario wherein that would occur. Uh, you have other interactions as well, such uh, other requirements as well, such as the Pauli exclusion principle, where, to cut the long story short, electrons cannot occupy the same state orbiting an atom. This law leads to the formation of specific molecular shapes. Without it, you'd basically have very indefinite molecular shapes, and life would not be able to exist either. Remember, the physical properties of the compounds we interact with, the compounds we use on a daily basis, the compounds that our bodies use, are reliant on those shapes. For example, the unique shape of the water molecule. It requires a very specific angle. If, though it did not, if it was not angled in such a manner, then water would not have the properties that it does. Uh, that's the short answer. The pe people out there who understand chemistry, who have a good chemical background or a good background in physics, know what I'm talking about. There are other problems with this, of course. Philosophical problems, for example. Tremendous, pro tremendous problems of personal identity. What does it mean for you to exist in multiple universes, etc.? Those are really secondary, though, to the other problems I talked about. The fact that there's no evidence for multiple universes, and if multiple universes were being created, it would still imply fine-tuning because you would need some manner of universe-generating mechanism that itself must be finely tuned to an incredible degree for a variety of reasons. So is the multiple universe explanation satisfactory? I don't believe so, not by a long shot.